Today we focus on a question. What happened to the three-day rule relative to the announcement of, uh, of the split that was coming up? And based on that, what will we see in, in the production space, given that we're getting production numbers sometime in the next 48 hours? This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. If this is your first time, welcome. If you're a repeat visitor, welcome back. We also want to thank our Patreon supporters. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated. It makes all the difference in the world for the viability of this channel and therefore is appreciated. Please also note this is a copyrighted broadcast. So I wanted to do a show today. The focus of the show was really on the question mark of, well, what's going on with the three-day rule and how come we're not seeing um, the results on the three-day rule this year or in the last, let's say, six months that we were seeing a year ago? And then the follow-on to that is, hey, how do we apply that logic to what we're going to see when it comes to production numbers? So the first thing I wanted to review is what is the three-day rule? As we shared, what tends to happen is that once numbers come in on Tesla, those numbers are used by analysts to sort of rebuild their models to determine how they're going to value the company, either higher or lower. And uh, this sets up how they advise their investors relative to what to do with their money, either buy, sell, hold, etc. So um, this process typically takes two or three days. And then a byproduct of that is what the large uh, fund managers start doing after that. So that's pretty much what the three-day rule uh, is. The problem with uh, this whole thing is that there's something called bots, there's something called AI or artificial inte intelligence, and then there's something called just intelligence of great investors and traders. So why that's a big deal here is that um, one of my trading buddies, Sam, keeps pointing out to me that, yes, there are individuals that can make money in the marketplace based on uh, a lot of different variables. One of them that kind of goes to the large money, uh, money, I call them market makers or large investors, is that they can see what's called order flow. So if you'll recall five to 10 years ago, uh, the whole idea of day trading was really popular and there are a lot of people that were making huge amounts of money doing so. What then happened is that there's a transition that occurred. That transition was that all of a sudden the uh, day traders that were making a killing were actually getting killed. So I mentioned that and the question is why? Well, what was actually happening is that the trading styles, techniques, process that were being taught, etc. Uh, it turns out that there are entities that are doing those trades and they can see what you're doing. And as they see those trades, they can actually counter what your trading activity might be. Even if it's in the short term, it totally screws up your trading. So the problem those firms all had was they may come up with algorithms that were profitable but the life cycle of those algorithms became very short because the computers got faster and faster and could in essence sniff out what that trading process was slash is. Fast forward to the three day rule. Yes, it worked for a while pretty religiously, but then it started waning and all these sort of interesting data points started happening. For example, when you notice the entry into the SUP of Tesla, did you notice how we went from everyone in, knew how important that day was? Yes, the movement of the stock occurred, but not on the day it was supposed to. 200 million tr shares traded and the stock almost did not move. It was as though it was off market trading that resulted in the S&P entry shares that were being purchased, being carefully controlled so the market makers would not lose money. Now, one of the lessons of that situation was the process by which, yes, they control the stock for that day, but notice the subsequent two weeks, how the true impact of the three-day rule was demonstrated in that 
the large investors did make their moves. It just wasn't in the timing that the three-day rule had allowed us to enjoy in the past. So I kind of bring this up because <coughs> um, there's no doubt that the process of reviewing data, upgrading models, and then uh, going out and trading, all of that is still occurring with every stock, including Tesla. The problem that comes up, though, is that um, there's a concept called who moved my cheese. And <clears throat> there was an argument that the cheese used to be right here. We knew where it was. You could go get it and make a great deal of money doing it. The challenge is that it's become more complex. So one of the books we've asked you to read is uh, Peter Lynch went up on Wall Street. And kind of what he gets into is the fact that you know, any kind of investing or trading within 30 days is extremely risky and uh, will likely cost you a lot of money. And the reason he came up with that was that exactly this is that you got some really smart traders that have more information than you. And yeah, you can beat them in the long term with good fundamental investing, which he teaches. But in the short term, they can actually create an environment that allows smaller investors to get wiped out very quickly. So you can make money in that space, but uh, you, the large investors and money make, uh, market folks have techniques that they can introduce with large amounts of capital and large amounts of technique across a number of instruments to move any stock around. Right now, the other thing that's occurred over the last let's say a year and a half for Tesla, is Tesla has gone from being a heavily traded option stock to being the number one uh, option traded on any exchange. And so, and in some cases, the options on Tesla are actually three, is three times the amount of option traded on everything else combined. So what this then means is that if we're gonna see the best techniques used by market makers to demonstrate their capabilities, they're gonna throw it against people trying to make money off of Tesla. So today's, um, or this weekend's numbers that we're gonna see have a couple of different qualities to it. The first thing is that as we always discuss, there are two components of how the production numbers are gonna hit. The first component is how did the quarter go? Were there any uh, positive or negative surprises that came from those numbers. The second component is how are we looking going forward? So things that can happen are if you had a great quarter and you announced that the next quarter or the next, the outlook is cloudy and does not look good, you can see a stock that did very well on sales in one quarter, but the stock gets killed because of the second half of the metrics. In the case of Tesla right now, we're in an interesting position because as you know, is a great quarter for Tesla. They're having a shortage of cars and every car produced has a couple of people trying to buy it. So, and then all prices rising, influencing that as well. So pretty much everything Tesla made, they sold. Um, clearly there were a couple of hiccups there with a couple of days taken off by China related to uh, their COVID lockdowns. And there are more days they're gonna be uh, in the mix, I think any more than 30 days, we start to see it affecting Tesla's numbers. But if it's less than that, I don't think it's a big deal. So basically, the current quarter numbers were bang and excellent for Tesla. The next question is, what do we look like going forward? And with Germany now opening and Austin about to open, and, and they were already doing production from Austin, I think that while the quarter was excellent, the going forward for Tesla is mind bogglingly good. So where this leads us then I believe is to um, an extremely strong response by the marketplace to Tesla's numbers. Um, I wanna remind you that we're gonna actually have numbers that come out of production. And one of the metrics that we came up with is to multiply $60,000 uh, per vehicle times a number of uh, vehicles produced to identify what the general um, revenue number will be so we can compare that against analyst expectations. We'll do a show that kind of breaks this down at the end, but if you want to do a quick thumbnail so you understand where things are going, I think that might be helpful. So 
my expectation is the numbers come out. Uh, they're excellent. We definitely get a three-day rule. We actually get a three-day rule in this case uh, for one big, big reason that we didn't get on the announcement of the split. And that is that, um, yes, the split is occurring. We don't know when or how many shares will be issued for each, but expect at least four. But the other thing that's happening here is that you have to kind of um, uh, extrapolate, you know, how was the growth rate, et cetera, and are there any hiccups that are inherently provided when we look at those numbers? In, in general, I think the answer is no hiccups is in general what I see happening. What I wanted to kind of emphasize here is the fact that um, obviously I think the numbers are going to be terrific, but it's one thing to have an announcement made that affects the stock price. It's another thing to give the analysts real numbers to chew on. So I think you'll find that chewing on those production numbers for the better analysts will allow them to uh, analyze those numbers effectively and therefore um, generate most of the movement of the stock that will occur between now and when earnings are announced because they can extrapolate. Um, when you look at the general numbers, particularly because of China, but, you know, prices may be up because, uh, and so revenue numbers may be higher without the margins being up anymore, just because, uh, costs have risen. But in general, one of the problems that everybody has with Tesla is they don't back out the numbers relative to the energy business. So that's why you'll notice the average price of the car is about $55,000 a piece but you're doing an estimate of $60,000 per vehicle because it encompasses the impact of revenue from mega packs and some of the other energy business Tesla has if you truly want to get close to what that revenue number is going to be. So um, the answer is, yeah, the three-day rule has gotten hijacked. And the th why, with the number of people using it now after we discussed it, and you've been making some money off of it, the market makers are in the mode right now where they don't like losing money, and therefore they can go out and employ tools to shift the game back in their direction, i.e. better information than you have, so they can make a great deal more cash. At any rate, um, we look forward to your comments, et cetera, on this, and we actually look forward to what the productions are gonna be, numbers are going to be, but. The rudimentary, yeah, the three-day rule still works. It's just that it actually has been hijacked because just like any other trading strategy people are making money off of that the market makers need to control, it gets the same treatment that the day traders got back in the day. So this prompts the idea that um, employing new methods to address this is wise. Hence why we have Patreon as a way to introduce other trading ideas relative to the process of how the market is addressing Tesla to help enhance your ability to make money. So I wanted to um, uh, thank you for taking time out to view. We're going to move on to our health tips. Just a reminder, um, the 25 leg lifts are a big deal. Stretching is a big deal and wanted to em emphasize those two. Um, I uh, also, you know, the 80 milligrams of aspirin a day suggested made by one of our docs is also one that I'm doing that I think is a pretty good idea. At any rate, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Hello in Russia. Ni hao ma. Chinese. Namaste. Hindi. Hey do. Swedish. I never dare to Spanish or excuse me, Italian. Uh, Namaste, Hindi, we covered. Um, Asante, Swahili. And in Jamaica, we say enough respect, walk good man. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day and bye for now. And best of luck as we enter this zone.